In cross-country flight training, it's fundamental to learn how to properly obtain climb and descent performance for a navigational log. In this video, EasyFly will teach you how to calculate a top of climb and a top of descent with the data provided by a Cessna 172S model POH. Let's begin. On today's first example, we will demonstrate a top of climb from surface to 1000 feet. The first thing we will need to do is obtain weather reports for temperatures and wind direction. In today's example, we will be departing from Miami Executive Airport. We want to use the temperature and wind data from the altitude we are climbing from. Therefore, we will use the winds a lot from the Miami area so we can interpolate our temperature values and we will use the TAF from Tamiami to obtain the winds from the surface considering Tamiami only has a field elevation of 10 feet. We want to make sure we use the winds a lot forecast that covers our departure time. and We can determine this by looking at the time of use from the chart. In our example, we will be departing at 1600 Zulu. The chart only starts forecasting temperatures starting at 6000 feet. So we will have to interpolate the temperatures to get to the one from the surface. Considering the temperatures decrease at a rate of 2 degrees Celsius for every 1000 feet. To obtain our surface temperature, we will need to add 12 degrees to the 9 degrees Celsius we would have found at 6,000 feet in the Miami area, which results in a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. We will use the 1,000 feet pressure altitude values presented on the chart to calculate our time, fuel, and distance to climb. However, before we include these values in our nav log, we want to make sure we read the notes on the bottom of the chart. For our fuel, we will have to add 1.4 gallons for engine start, taxi, and takeoff allowance which results in a consumption of 1.8 gallons from surface to 1,000 feet. To continue, note 3 specifies that we have to increase our time, fuel and distance by 10% for each 10 degrees above standard temperature. Considering that we are climbing out of Miami Executive Airport, which has a field elevation of only 10 feet, our ISA temperature at that altitude will be approximately 15 degrees Celsius and considering our actual surface temperature that we previously calculated was 21 degrees, we will be 6 degrees above standard temperature. Therefore, we will have to add 6% to the values presented on the table, which results in a time to climb to 1,000 feet of approximately 1.1 minutes and a fuel burner of approximately 1.9 gallons if we round our numbers up. Now for our distance we cannot use the one shown on the table considering that note 4 specifies that the value provided is only based on zero winds and considering that our departure winds at 1600 Zulu are 330 at 8 knots we will have to find our distance using a different method. We will start by checking our indicated airspeed at sea level considering that's where our climb will originate from and then we will have to go from indicated airspeed to calibrated airspeed using our airspeed calibration chart provided on our POH, which results in a calibrated airspeed of approximately 73 knots. After this, we will have to go from calibrated to true airspeed using our flight computer, which results in an answer of 74 knots. And finally, using the back portion of the flight computer, we will have to convert our previous value to ground speed using the winds mentioned before in our terminal forecast and the true course in our first stop of climb in our nav lock, which results in a ground speed of 67 knots. Once we know this ground speed using the time to climb to 1000 feet that we previously calculated, we will need to determine our distance. We can use our flight computer again for this process, or we can use the formula of distance equals velocity multiplied by time, making sure that we have the right units when using it. Time will have to be in hours and speed will need to be in knots. After we complete this process, our distance to climb to 1000 feet ended up being 1.2 nautical miles. The same procedure should be applied with making additional top of climbs in our nav lock, keeping in mind that if a climb is going to be made from 1000 to 2500 feet, to just give an example, interpolation will be required between the time, fuel and distance values of 2000 and 3000 feet, considering that our climb is only up to 2500 feet. Additionally, once we obtain those values, we should subtract them from the values shown at 1,000 feet, considering that the airplane is already at that altitude. In the second part in our video, we will explain you how to plan a top of descent. Considering that the 172S model doesn't have a descent performance chart, we will need to find a different method to calculate the point on which we should begin our descent. For a 172, a descent profile of 90 knots indicated airspeed and 500 feet per minute will give us a stabilized descent. Therefore, the first thing we will need to do is determine the altitude we will be losing on the descent. In today's example, our airplane will be at 3,500 feet, 
and he will be making a descent to the surface. Therefore, using the values presented above, if we divide the altitude to lose by the descent rate we want to use, we will know how much time it will take us to descend. In today's example, the answer will be 7 minutes. Now, to determine the distance it will take us, we will have to transform our 90 knots indicated airspeed to ground speed, using the same process we did to determine the distance in our top of climb. We will go from indicated airspeed to calibrated airspeed using our airspeed calibration chart, from calibrated to true airspeed using our flight computer, and finally from true airspeed to ground speed using our true course and the wind forecast at 3000 feet in our destination, which results in a ground speed of 94 knots. And finally, with the time and speed, we can determine the distance the airplane will take on its descent with our formula or with our flight computer. After completing this process, our airplane will need to start its descent 11 nautical miles before reaching the surface. And there you have it guys, top of climbs and top of descents easily explained. Don't forget to subscribe and to check our other courses at myeasyfly.com. Thanks for watching.